Morning, everyone. So this is day four. Do you want some more? Yes. Yeah. 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 You know what? Um, when you first come, you're fearful, right? Yeah. You're fearful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wonder if he's like he is on his videos, and I wonder if he's nice. Uh, uh, is he going to out me out and embarrass me? Is he going to make me feel foolish? Yeah. Have I made anybody feel foolish? No. No. no, but I've taken you further than you would allow anybody else. That's it. I've taken you further than you would allow anybody else. Now, why? Because when you come through your heart, and you honestly come through your heart, most people don't know when they're caught in their head or when they're in their heart, but you would. Always put your hand on your heart when you talk to people. Practice that until you no longer have to put your hand on your heart. As soon as you put your hand on your heart, you take an elevator, not going down, but going up, because your heart knows everything and you're because your heart is universal you know what they did a study and they could not find how far the vibration of the heart went out and we know how it, it attaches to everyone so the reality is you will feel everyone suffering if you don't learn how to love yourself unconditionally that's it oh i feel everybody's pain you know all right I'm an empathic. No, you're not. You're a victim. Okay, so empathic got turned into victim. I will have so many women call me up. Never a man. Have I ever had a man call me? But women, I'm an empathic. I feel everything. Well, I would like to hear it this way. I'm an empathic and I can feel what people are feeling. I don't take it on, but it allows me to be able to work with them and know what they need. That's what I am. So you can call me heartless, but I'm not heartless. I fill up my heart with unconditional love for myself and I don't need to protect myself against the world's suffering because I know that the suffering was a choice. And the reality is, is this, it's not a choice when you first get here, when you enter the womb, sometimes it's a tomb. And then uh, from zero to seven, you're in a trance, you're in a theta state, you have no filters, so you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. And then people can go, well, you choose your parents. Well, who really knows? Nobody can say that and make it a statement. Okay, I know what I know and I know what I don't know. But I am going to uh, create my own stories that will always empower me. Because everybody else clean makes their own BS up, belief systems. Yes or no? Yes. Everybody makes their own BS up. And I just told you here today. You know, somebody said something and I said, that's a lie. And, oh, no, no, yeah, but you got to understand, you got to lie to yourself to become something new. And understand, <clears throat> remember what I said? We tell our children, it's not, children not to lie, but we lie to ourselves all the time. If you're self-loathing, if you've got hate in you, if, if, if you've got uh, depression, you're lying because you're lying to become less. Okay, so they told you you were less, and now you're lying that you're less. Do you understand? So it's, it's all a great setup. I mean, from zero to seven, we take on 70 to 90% of all of our belief systems that we carry with us till the day that we die. And I said die, because people who carry those belief systems, they die. They have divorces, they have diseases, they have death. Okay, people that understand and create new belief systems don't have any of that. They pass on, okay? When, when I um, realized that, you know, where I was at at the time, I came together with my wife and we had children. I couldn't stay where I was. I, if I had to stay where I was, I'd either be dead because of a disease, which is just a symptom of being out of balance and out of harmony, Okay, or I'd be miserable and treating myself miserable and everybody else miserable. Because when you realize that you have to feed your spirit to heal yourself, when you realize that you have to feed your spirit, I don't want to get, I don't want to get uh, uh, whatever it would, might be called. I'm not going to put a name on it. But Jesus Christ fed his spirit so much that he, he was able to break free from what we call the planet Earth game, the life-threatening, fun-filled adventure called planet Earth. And that's my belief, that's my story, I'm allowed to have it. And then other people are going, that's not true, that's not true. Well, you know what, everybody's got a different story. And um, I also don't believe that Jesus died for my sins because I never even got here yet, but I'm a sinner. 
So I, I have my own beliefs and I'm allowed to have that even though people will bash me and they'll come on my platform, they'll come on my platform and bash me, but I don't, you know, it's not like I bash them. Everybody's got different beliefs. I believe that uh, uh, Jesus was murdered for unconditional love and that's all. Unconditional love for people because if people actually had unconditional love, they wouldn't cow tie to the medical system that's not healthcare. They wouldn't cow tie to a supermarket that 90% of the food that's in there today never existed 90 years ago. And that's why 90% of all diseases today never existed 90 years ago. So the reality is, is this, is you have to become um, a storyteller. You have to use your imagination and no matter what your story is today, and yes, you can say it actually happened today, but the only thing that happens to you today is the story that you tell yourself. So somebody just uh, called me up and said, Daryl, there was another article written about you, about how, you know, you're so evil and, you know, can I help you and can I write an article against this person? You know, this, uh, uh, this, uh, they wrote an article for CBC, uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, you know, and I said, no, leave it alone, you know, don't buy into their story. Don't buy into anybody's story. Buy into your story. Buy into the hero's story. The one that keeps you in the conscious moment, loving yourself, connected to your heart, filling up your own heart. That's the only story. So understand something. You know, it's like this. You know, I hope I get well. I am well. And understand something, you better make it right with whatever religion you have or whatever you believe in. Whatever you believe in, whatever it is, because there's so many different things that people believe in, that if you believe that that which you believe in totally loves you unconditionally and that you deserve to be healed, how long should it take you? Okay, if you believe that you don't deserve healing, okay, that you are guilty of something, how long should it take you? Well, it'll never happen. You will get there. You know what? People go, willpower will get us through. There's a song, remember? Willpower will get us through this. Well, it won't. Willpower is using your energy and you get exhausted over it. That's why you have this, the, 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 uh, uh, the second time I got cancer, the third time I got cancer, and the fourth time hardly ever happens because you've just totally drained yourself. So understand, we're back to it. You reactivate your disease by telling the same old story. If you're not willing to tell a new story, then you can't have a healing. And if you do have a healing, it's because your church got together and prayed for you and that works, but it only is temporary. It's only temporary because the only storyteller is yourself, okay? You've got 50 trillion cells listening to you and you've got 500 trillion bacteria that are waiting for your orders. So orders on an emotional and physical level. You know, you are the master of this, or you may not be the master. Everybody's being mastered, actually. 80% of the population will never, ever have critical thinking, which is logic, which is logic. So they're reactive. And that is a study that was done. It's not me. That was a, a, a huge study that was done. It says that 80% of the population is incapable of having logic or what we call critical thinking. Okay, now does everybody know that intelligence is when you are using your imagination full force? That's what intelligence is. Uh, yeah, because it's creating new things and image creates a thought, a thought creates an emotion and, and if that image was actually created by your imagination and you were in unconditional love for yourself, if you're in hate and you have an image, what's it gonna look like? Okay, so we know that hate is a ball of cancer we know that uh, anger, okay, is a liver problem. We know that not letting go and stubbornness is hemorrhoids and constipation and pelvic inf infection and inflammation. And most people have a trouble letting things go. And they can't let go of relationships that c should go. They can't let go of food that isn't food because it's drugged. Most people don't understand that actually the vitamin D that's in milk is actually a, 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 a cancer, uh, it could be a cancer causing drug. Yeah, uh, why don't you look it up, okay? And if you look up the actual chemical that they use for vitamin D to put into milk, 
it actually is a it, it's been used as a rat poison. So the reality is, is this: it, it, if you if you take too much milk, you take too much of this, it'll calcify different parts of your body. So you have to understand the majority of the population is going to read a label. The majority of the population isn't going to research. That's eighty percent of the population. So, so you, you can read the label. I know, but you cannot get upset. I'm going to get to it. You cannot get upset and angry over things that you cannot control. And the only thing that you could learn how to control is your emotions. And once you learn how to control your emotions, you're able to control everything else about your life. Everything! And now you can create free will. There's no such thing as free will without you mastering your emotions which means that you do not take on anybody's negativity. You know, this lady, because uh, uh, I guess somebody said on Facebook this morning, and she says, oh, yes, you know what? Um, yes, he will call you back, and uh, uh, he's a really great doctor, but he's crazy. <laughs> so understand this. Never give up your crazy, and yeah. don't be offended by it. Don't be don't be offended by crazy. Don't be don't be offended by different. You know, and understand something. The same words mean different things to everyone. And today everyone gets so bloody offended, don't they? It is so easy to offend someone. Okay? And the reality is is everybody out there doesn't realize that they were actually programmed to be offended. Because when you're offended, you shut down. When you're offended, you can't listen. When you're offended, you can't grow. Right. And when you get offended, then you become the judge and the jury, and then you put that person in jail, and then you put yourself in jail, depending on how much you hate them or don't like them, okay, how long you're going to carry that around like toilet paper on the bottom of your heel, okay, will depend on how much you suffer. So I would suggest that the next time that you're offended and you really hate someone, you know, at least call them up every five minutes and tell them that you hate them. You know, just keep telling them you hate them. You know, you got to get something out of it. So you're not getting anything out of it if you keep it to yourself. you got to share it. I hate Dr. Wolf. I hate him. I hate him. I want the world to know. Well, people will let the world know. The reality is, is if you're different or you're... Or they'll call you crazy or they'll call you a, 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 you're a rebel, you know, or, or you're coming up against, you're coming up against the system. You know, wouldn't want to do that. Wouldn't want to come up against the system. Just go with the system and you'll be flushed down the system. So you better start telling a new story to yourself and mind your own business and don't listen to other people's stories that bring you down and stop hanging around with people that bring you down. Yeah, but that's my, that's my husband. Well, there's a clue. Okay, do whatever you want, right? Do whatever you want. So the reality is, is this, is that you are an infinite spirit on an infinite journey. And if you don't understand that, and you know what? The only goal that you have here is to unconditionally love yourself and never have to forgive yourself again. And then people always get it really knotted up, especially the ones that have these other beliefs. Oh my God, if I never have to forgive myself again, I could hurt someone. Really? So people with unconditional love go around hurting people. No, people that have beliefs that believe that everybody's belief has to match theirs hurts people. That's the only thing that hurts people. You know, you know, I don't go around and tell people what they need to become. Not even you guys. I'll tell you what you, I, I tell you what you could become anything that you want to become. But you better watch your mouth and you better watch the brain that doesn't think it only runs programs and it only dumps chemicals and hormones. And if you don't have the right thoughts, it dumps the wrong hormones and chemicals and then you don't get high. OK, you just cry all day. That's it. So I want to talk about one other topic here, and uh, that topic is this. I, um, I have a lateral meniscus. Any non-surgery would help? Uh, listen, we can reverse it. If we don't, I'll give you your money back, okay? Understand something. When, when our non-surgical therapists work on any part of your body where a doctor, a chiropractor, or any other therapist says there's no help for you, well, they're not lying because that's as much as they know. I'm not putting them down. 
You don't know what you don't know. I'm giving you a money back guarantee on every consultation we do, which is you get lifetime support from our master trainers and a guaranteed six weeks intense support with whatever master trainer you decide to go to if you go to docofdetox.com and click on consultation. And it's a whole whopping $150. And then when you get our perfect day manual, which is a 400 page manual, it is the most massive take action uh, practitioner healing guide that you'll ever touch. It's worth, the guide is worth $500 to $1,000 any day of the week. And we're gonna give you this. So you know, I really love this stuff. Dr. Wolf, don't go to him, he's a killer. You know, the reality is, is this, is uh, um, people don't like the way I talk, and I didn't put down chiropractors, I didn't put down anybody else right now. I'm trying to tell you, it doesn't matter what practitioner you go to, he is limited or she is limited by their beliefs. I have no limiting beliefs. If I work on somebody and, it, and I can't help them, if the first treatment blow their mind, I'm giving them their money back and I'll tell them where I think they should go, nicely. <laughs> okay and and we will send you somewhere else you need everybody needs to get something in their head right now not one of you every one of you every one of you has poverty consciousness every one of you I can hear it when you talk I just created a two thousand two hundred and fifty thousand dollar app that is going to be free to the world I've got the largest self-care, self-love uh, library and what health really is in the world. And it's free. Are you not getting this yet? So as soon as you become abundant and you want to become the gift, then guess what? You will be gifted. That's how the universe works. And never, ever, ever, ever again, when people are dissing you, no matter from what level, never stand up for yourself. Never stand up for yourself. Go inside and hold the line. If your beliefs do not match the majority of the beliefs of your family, your friends, or the world, you'll be crazy. You'll be a troublemaker. You'll be a fraud. You'll be everything. Just take it in and understand something. These people that are spreading this stuff, the only people that believe this about you are people that wouldn't come to you. I, I'm not kidding. They wouldn't come to you anyway. And remember something, only 1% one, 1 of 1% of the population will ever come to you because they have to buy into actually deserving a healing. Most people want to be healed because they're in pain. Why wouldn't you want to just be healed because you know that that which created the universe has only cared for you and loved you? No, if you had a belief that that which created the universe was always judging you and you're always on the line, you're in heaven or hell or you're in limbo, God, don't, I don't know what to do. You know, the reality is, is that you're never going to move forward. You're never going to move forward. So people will actually say to me, you're going to get yours, Daryl. Yeah, really? I don't know, I haven't even got a rash, you know? Oh yeah, but when you die, okay, which I, I don't die, the body just leaves and the spirit moves on. Go get yours, yeah, watch, watch my Facebook. Watch my Facebook, watch anything that I go on and I'll be getting mine. How would you like to live like that? How would you like to have a belief that you're gonna tell people they're gonna get theirs because theirs doesn't match yours? So mind your own business and put all your energy inside yourself and fill up that heart and just move forward with your passion and your dreams. That's it. That's all we need to do here. Mind your, all right? The love that you have for yourself is the most important thing you'll ever have. It is, it is. And then somebody's gonna go, well, uh, I thought it was God's love. Or Jesus well guess what what do you think I just said so whatever what do you think that is whatever fills your heart whatever fills your soul whatever feeds your spirit everybody is just so what about me what about my belief I don't know what about it why don't you go water it and let it grow and if it's that good you know just nourish it and allow everybody else to have their beliefs and just find the goodness and the beauty in people you know when somebody's trying to do wrong you can feel their vibe. 
Well, okay, when I say grow up, okay, growing up is just filling your heart with love and processing every thought you have through your heart. Never go to your mind first. So guess what? You know, every time that you react and attack yourself and everyone else, how does it work out? What if you did three lion heart breaths, six seconds in, seven seconds out and touched your heart? Okay, here it goes. I can feel the boiling pot, right? Three, two, one. I got this. Three, two, one. That's the old me. Three, two, one. I got this, you know? And so don't react. Don't react. Okay. You have a bully belief. If I bully people and myself, I will protect myself. And people believe if they bully others, they'll stay safe. So don't be upset with the bully. Just don't go near the bully. Because a bully is a bully is a bully. Hi, I know you're a bully. Would you like to love yourself? Bam! All right. So anyways, uh, I, I was telling the, uh, um, the uh, pelvic master practitioners who do the pelvic course, the pelvic restoration, uh, I'm going to do a talk on it right now because pelvic restoration is the most important thing in health today. And I'm gonna explain why, and I'm gonna explain why you've been, all been ruled and all been screwed, okay? All right? Uh, anyways, we've got a pelvic course here happening uh, April the 26th to the 28th. It's only for women only. We will have a pelvic course for men, okay, um, after, um, because this is really taking off fast, the pelvic course. And we will have a pelvic course for men. Uh, that will only last a day because um, they have a hard time caring for themselves. They have a hard time realizing that they can. That'll be, and that'll be starting next year. Okay, we need enough women out there, okay, to get their men and go, No, you're going. You're going. <laughs> okay, all right. It'll be something like that. <laughs> and they won't be talking like that. That's not how they talk. Just know I'm not putting. <laughs> um, so, anyways, there'll be a pelvic course here. Uh, I will be finishing up the Whole Life Coach next Wednesday and next Friday. Uh, the non-surgical still starts. If you want to learn the, the most powerful technique, and I will, I will challenge any chiropractor, any massage therapist, any acupuncturist, or any a physiotherapist, or anybody else that does shiatsu or any other technique that we do have the most powerful body work. And uh, if we don't, I'll give you your money back. Okay. About the lectures. Oh yeah, and I have a lecture that I'm doing on uh, next Wednesday called the Perfect Day uh, for the Perfect Life. And that lecture will be held here at the Presbyterian Church. And I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to come here. Okay, I don't know how they allowed it because I've been called the devil, but I guess they didn't read that stuff. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, next, so that'll be 6.30. We'll have a meet and greet for half an hour. Then we'll do it at 7 o'clock. And um, you'll give the address when I'm done, right? Yes. Okay. And... Um, uh, the next one will be with Dr. Sage Wolf the following 19th. The, the 19th. Following the following Wednesday, Dr. Sage Wolf. And these will be, um, these will be uh, live on Facebook, but Sage doesn't go on TikTok or Telegram. He doesn't have like four phones like his wacky father. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, that's what she called me. She didn't say I was crazy. She said I was wacky. That's it. See, I am wacky. I just said it. Okay, anyways, I just wanted to, reconf I wanted to reconfirm the whack part. Okay? Um, so let's, let's just go through this. Um, and then Serena is going to be here to do the pelvic course, everyone. And when she comes to do the three-day pelvic course, they'll be here a couple of days early. Do we have a date for that? Yes. The Monday. Monday. Which is what date? Anyways, you look that up. We'll talk about it later. Anyway, so uh, Stewart, Florida, the pelvic course will be on April 26th to the 28th. Barrie, Ontario from June the 28th to the 30th. Chicago, Illinois from July 12th to the 14th. Calgary, Alberta from August the 4th to the 6th. Coffs Harbor, Australia from September the 4th to the 6th. And before every one of those, there'll be a full Wolf non-surgical uh, certification training if you want to bring your game up or you just want to heal you, you and your family. Uh, and um, with Dr. Sage Wolf, that's 12 days. And my whole life coach is nine. Uh -huh. Hi, Dr. Ben. Hi, Dr. Ben. Hi, hi, hi. 
had problems with my phone this morning. Yeah, everybody, hold on. Uh, Dr. Ben, you're on TikTok. You're uh, on uh, Facebook. You're on YouTube. You're on Instagram. We're doing a live right now. I just didn't want to miss your call. Can I call you back in a while? All right, sir. Uh, yeah. Nice nice to hear your voice. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye now. So just so you know, everyone, that's Dr. Ben. And uh, Dr. Ben is the one that's helping us set up our university so that people can go through our protocols and uh, get their doctorates with us. Doctorate of Indigenous Medicine and Doctorate of Natural Medicine. Okay? So you can start with here with taking the course and it'll take you three to four years if you put your heart into it and you'll have a real doctorate. And uh, people are going to go, oh, he's running a paper mill. Yeah, really? Well, why don't you do some research? So people are always going to shoot their mouth off. Like somebody said to me yesterday and called me up and said, oh, you're not a real doctor. You can't give doctorates. And I go, what's a real doctor? A real doctor is a teacher. And a real doctor teaches people about health. Now, is the medical system into health? And they hung up. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so people don't use their logical mind because the medical system's not into health. They're in emergency care. So if you are uh, on the brink of losing it, they're going to cut it out or they're going to numb you out, right? One or the other. Right. And I'm not putting them down because that's really needed because 80% of the population doesn't have critical thinking or logical thinking. So we need the emergency care. But guess, think what? If we never had, if we never had drugs, if we never had chemo, if we never had radiation, people would what? They were, is the way to go. The silver bullet therapy is the way to go. And the silver bullet therapy is going to take you down. It's going to take you down. There's no such thing as a shortcut here. Only unconditional love and care for yourself. Okay? So let's get to it. Um, all right. Okay, so let's talk about pelvic restoration. Pelvic restoration, okay, is all based on getting rid of inflammation. Now, how many people know that there's only one this ease. Now, does somebody, do you, do you actually understand that this ease means out of ease? It means out of harmony. It means not in balance. Go look up the word. Disease is a symptom. A disease is a symptom that first I was feeling a little bit of cramping and gas. Sometimes I'd have a little bit of pain in my pelvis. You know, I'd get a little bladder infection sometimes. I'd get a little bit constipated sometimes. But the reality is, is that the majority of the population doesn't know what constipation is. It doesn't mean you don't go to the bathroom. It means that everything that comes out, everything that comes out is not everything. So it's not what comes out that's the problem. It's what stays in. Now, I want everybody to just think about this when it comes to restoring your pelvis because you have to restore your pelvis. Does anybody know why you have to restore your pelvis? Because any place where they say you have a disease, because that means you've had the symptom long enough that they actually gave it a name, yes or no? Okay, so if you had a symptom long enough that they actually named it, you know, wow, now you've got a real friend. Let's name your friend. And understand something, you believe this or not, but if you have a disease for more than nine months, which is a chronic symptom, it becomes a frenemy. A lot of people will use their, their symptom and their disease to get the love that they were promised that they didn't get, or the check that they want from the government, or, okay, that I'm not doing this anymore. And if I become a cripple or a victim, I won't have to do this anymore. Now, they aren't doing it on a conscious level, because understand something, take a look Take a look back. Take a look back as far as you can. Okay? And I'm talking to you. Take a look back as far as you can. When you were a little girl, how many canes did you see? How many walkers did you see? How many wheelchairs did you see? All of those walkers, all of those canes, all of those wheelchairs, okay? They weren't needed because people weren't pooping in their pelvis. Okay? They weren't pooping in their pelvis, and none of you have good poop. You can't have good poop today with the blue light, with the 5G, and you know what? You all eat processed foods, and 
you all eat foods that you think are healthy that are still being poisoned. Are we done yet? Because you should have perfect health if you had a perfect day diet. Okay, so the reality is, is that if you have a disease for more than nine months, it becomes a friend. Now, a person that has a cane and they use that cane, okay, for more than nine months, that cane becomes a new appendage. And that cane, they love that cane because it helps them walk. But little did they know, we'll give them a money back guarantee that they can get rid of that cane. Now, why do they have the cane? Well, understand this. Why don't you go do a cane check? Why don't you go and do a, a, a walker check, a wheelchair check, a, a wearing depends check? Why don't you do a check on everyone that has got that? Because that means that their low back is going. That means their hips are going. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, now, are you ready for this? Yes. Not even one out of 100 were a sports injury or a car accident. It was chronic infection pooping in the pelvis. It's called the pelvic bowl. It's called the pelvic bowl for God's sakes. It is the root chakra. It's called the root chakra. It is the temple for a man and a woman. Whether you believe it or not, more information is collected in the pelvis and given to the brain to tell the brain what to do than any other part of the body. Now, what if you are pooping in the pelvis? Let me ask you a question. Do you drink milk? Do you eat cheese? Do you eat yogurt? Do you eat animal products that aren't free range and organic? You're doing antibiotics. If you do that, just like the average person would do it a month, that's one round of antibiotics every month. And you'll say to somebody, hey, are you doing antibiotics? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Okay. Do you structure your water? Because structured wa water is the only water that actually removes the frequency of antibiotics and all the drugs that get dumped down into the toilet. Are you with me yet? Okay, all right. So now we know that if you, if you uh, not just antibiotics, but if you have an inflammatory diet where you're doing dairy, too many flour products, too many new, new and improved foods, right? Okay, too much sugar, okay? All right, what's gonna happen here is, is you're going to distort your good bacteria. How many people know that the same bacteria that you're using to get the bacterial soap out of to go like this goes through your skin and it actually destroys the bacteria in your large intestine? Not many people know that. And everybody is doing it. Uh, so I can't wait until we have the avian thing start to happen this fall and then everybody's gonna be, and, and if, if viruses were alive, why would you be using bacterial soap because it's not a bacterial problem? Welcome to moronic land. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get off of that, Daryl. Don't be so wacky. Okay. <laughs> so the reality is here is, is that we have 50 trillion cells in our body, but we have, we have uh, 500 trillion bacteria if you are healthy. 15% of those bacteria are supposed to always be negative. Why? Because 15% negative bacteria keeps your immune system on check. Now, guess what? Don't believe me, okay? Only one out of 100 people have 15% bad bacteria and 85% good. <coughs> 99 out of 100 people will have 85% bad bacteria and 15% good. Now. Why don't we take a look at everybody's abdomen that everybody's so comfortable with. Women look pregnant and they're not. Men look pregnant and, well, they could be. Uh, what I've heard, I, I don't know, I'm just gonna go by what I heard. So, and, and, and some of the women and some of the men look like they're going to have quadruplets. Quadruplets, well, I don't know, what are they called? Yeah. Something like that. So, but the reality is, is this, is they're not giving birth to something that is beautiful. What they're giving birth to is, is the, the uh, good bacteria have gone bad and they're giving off a gas called endotoxin. And the endotoxin, well, if you didn't notice it, okay, why don't you go ask somebody that's got a bit of a belly? Okay, so how, let me ask you a question, Miss Belly. Now see, if you can talk to people like this because you're coming from love, I'm not making fun of her, because guess what? Uh, you've been here three days, are you losing weight already? Absolutely. Tons of it, eh? It's, hey, look at, 12 pounds in three days. 12 pounds in three days. So you know what? Think of me as wacky. Think of me as different. But guess what? You say you want different, but then you don't want me? 
Okay. All right. Now, so the reality is, is that her tummy used to go up and down like an accordion. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, because that she, she has a new disease and I'm going to make up my disease now. Okay. Is that okay? Can I have one? It's called, <laughs> it's called gas has. <laughs> okay. Gas has. And, and you got to say it fast because if you don't, then you're swearing. Okay. So gas has is the only epidemic pandemic that I know of. And guess what? Now, if you don't believe me, uh, guaranteed uh, bad breath, because guess what? She has her own manure pile down here rotting. And have you ever gone to the farm? Ever gone to anybody's farm that had a manure pile? Well, yeah. well okay. And uh, if you go there, does it smell bad? Well, that's because it's decaying. Okay, now if you were to take a pitchfork and flip over the manure, it would, gas would come off. If you're in a manure bar, a, a barn where they don't shovel out the manure enough, or, or if it's moist and it's not drying out, it can actually uh, choke you, right? Oh yeah. oh yeah, but guess what? Can I say something? You can be in the barn and once you're in there for three to five minutes, you can't smell it anymore. That's right, you can't smell it anymore. Okay, so understand, does everybody know that gum disease is from bum disease? Yeah, it is. Well, come on, the manure pile, does, does the gas rise? Yeah. So just, okay, so look at it this way, hot air balloon, right? Okay, so hot air balloon, that would be your tummy. And, but does gas rise? Okay, so is your mouth the front door, your, your butt the back, your anus the back door? And then the manure pile is going to be somewhere stuck in that last five to seven feet called your large intestine, which is 85% of your immune system. Are you with me yet? Yes. Have I lost you yet? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So now, so now what's happening is, is that, oh, I don't smell because I eat a clean diet. I don't smell because I'm not creating hell. And hell is actually putrefaction in your large intestine. Now, I told you that 85% of your immune system lives in your large intestine. Now, who said that? Who did the largest study, longest study on the large intestine? And they regret it. The British Society of Me Medical Medicine, the Royal Society of Medicine. Okay, and what they determined was is 85% of all disease, and that was them. But I will tell you it's gotta be 95 to 98%. But they said 85% of all disease, which is just a symptom that has not been treated properly, and that's because practitioners don't know what they're doing. And I can say that. Well, if they knew what they were doing, why would it be a d disease? It, the symptoms should have been taken care of. And symptoms are only body talk. Your body's saying, can you please love me? Can you please check in with me? And, but you, if you didn't understand body talk, which is a language, then it would be foreign to you. Like somebody talking Chinese, you know, you're not going to just stand there and go, yeah, 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 yeah. So the reality is, is this, is that even natural health practitioners and definitely medical doctors, even if they know the symptoms, medical doctors, they're not allowed to talk about it. Because eating has nothing to do with health and neither does pooping. All they'll ever say is you might need to lose weight, but you don't need to lose weight so much because there is nobody that is fat. There is nobody, you're fat. No, you're not, you're inflamed and infected. You get infected first, then the inflammation, and if, you, and if, you, if your body couldn't make fat, you'd be dead already because the inflammation would go to mutation because too much inflammation, you've got stage one, two, three, four, and stage four inflammation is stage four cancer. So the reality is if you weren't able to make fat, and that's why people that are underweight that can't gain weight, okay, are more sick than people that are overweight. So understand that. And the people that can't gain weight, they're the terrorists. They're the ones that are always talking to themselves, putting themselves down, analyzing things, finding out why they're guilty, why someone else is guilty, and they're uh, parasites. But don't get me wrong, you can be obese and have parasites because every manure, every manure pile has worms. Every manure pile has worms. Okay, so did the worms crawl in or did you create the worms? You created them. They didn't even exist. They didn't crawl into you. You made them. Now, nobody, most people don't understand this, but worms, bad bacteria, 
fungus, and even cancer, which is stage four inflammation, if it wasn't there, you'd be dead. So until you return back to harmony, until you return back to balance, you can just get ready to kiss your butt goodbye, so you better buckle up, baby. So the reality is, okay, is that when you go to a doctor, it's very rare, or a nurse, anybody in the medical field, they'll take a look at you and say lose weight. They won't say lose waste. Now understand, why do we have all the fat, maybe the love handles? Why do we have the bulge in the front hanging down? Well, because the bulge in the front that's hanging down is actually your intestine dying. Okay, so it's falling down and out, the large intestine. So now it's like a dead snake. Okay, can we not go in and out and in and out? Thank you. Okay, so now it's like a dead snake. The person that you see that has the big belly, that's all gas. I mean, if you were to stick a pin in them, they'd fly all over the room, but it would stink. Okay, and understand that same person has bad breath. Why don't you have them breathe deeply and breathe on you? It'll probably melt the skin off your face. Okay, that same person cannot roll over and kiss their partner in the morning. They must brush their teeth because that partner is going to say, wow, wow, somebody pooped in your mouth. Okay, now understand, does everybody understand that a plaque attack is actually a gas attack? It's actually hot air rising from your abdomen that causes the plaque in your mouth. It's not from what you ate today. It's what you ate, okay? So a plaque attack is a gas attack because guess what? If somebody were to fart right now, okay, can he, does anybody have a fart handy? <laughs> so if somebody were to fart right now, you cannot smell the fart unless there's actual microscopic poo particles and bacteria in the air. Right? So understand that. So if your underwear smells, that's because there's particles in your underwear. So the reality is these small particles are being, they rise up because of hot air rises. Hot air rises. And guess what? Enough of it in your mouth and I've got gum disease, which is bum disease. I've got plaque, which is a gas attack. Are, we, are you with me yet? Yeah. yeah, I would just love somebody to challenge me on this stuff. You know, because they're just going, uh, I don't like him. Because guess what? We will never give power back to the people. And understand something, everybody here. Do not compete with anyone. You just be the best practitioner that you can be. Do not put down anybody. When I hear, I'm not putting down the medical system. They save my daughter. They save a lot of people. But they need to, they need to stay the hell out of health care. They need to be in emergency care. Okay? I, I, I would do very bad in emergency care. We can do the best we can for people. But people that are on their way out, <laughs> you, uh, I'm not the guy you want to see. Right? And this is why I will not treat somebody who says they have stage three or four cancer. I'll treat somebody who says they have stage three or four inflammation because that means they're ready to, and willing to take responsibility for themselves. And when I'm treating them, I'm not treating them, I'm training them. Because if we don't train them how to have the perfect day from the moment they rise until they close their eyes, then we're just stealing their money. All right. So anyways, the armpits, the smelly groin, okay, the fishy smell from the vagina, that's fungus, okay, and that would be called candidiasis. So remember something, take a look at it, everybody has a good diet compared to Uncle Fred who's dead, okay, everybody says they have a great diet because you compare your diet with the rest of your family. And the reality is, is that you're here because you're searching a better diet and the rest of your family's not coming because they are not interested. You understand? So I'm just telling the truth. So when you come here, yes, your diet is better than your family's, but it's still terrible. Or you wouldn't have all these problems. But the main problem is, is the mind, we're not gonna talk about that right now, but understand something, pelvic problems are also emotional. She cheated on me, so I'm, not, I'm gonna have a prostate problem or I'm not gonna be able to get it up because I was never good enough for her, okay? He cheated on me. A woman will take it harder, and, and where do you think that you would store that negative emotion? 
in your finger or in your vagina? Okay, thank you. Okay, I lost my baby. Where would you store that? That's right. Okay. All right, I can't have a baby. Where would you store that? Okay. All right. Now we could keep going with this, but you've got you've got what it what it okay? Or I just can't get it up anymore. Okay? So now I'm not a man. Where would I store that negativity? So if I can't get it up, I want to know why. And that's because my hormones are out of balance because I'm so toxic now. I'm so acidic. Okay? All right? Or I don't feel like a man. So, right? But the, not feeling like a man, and if you've thought about that long enough and strong enough, most men consider themselves men when they can get an erection. And you're not a man when you can't have an erection. That's, well, that was how we're taught, right? <laughs> yes, for sure. Okay, all right. So the emotional is there, I don't want to get into it because that's a whole hour topic. And understand that, it's a whole hour topic. And remember something, every time that you tell a story, you're feeding something, okay? So I'm gonna tell a story that could create an erection or I'm gonna tell a story that would bring me down, right, or make me limp. Okay, do you tell stories that make you limp? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Now, let's get back to it. So here's the deal, and I'm gonna come back to it, and I don't mean to harp on this because I know that antibiotics have saved lives. I'm not gonna deny that fact, okay? But I'm gonna tell you that antibiotics should only be taken in a life-threatening situation, or you will have a life-threatening situation from antibiotics. Okay, do you think that going down and putting an atomic bomb in your large intestine and blowing up your good bacteria, uh, uh, the, the bad and the good is a smart thing? No. Okay, all right. Uh, and we'll talk about alternatives that we would do here, but I won't be saying them on here because then guess what? They just want to come at me. Okay, so and it's, it, it, I gotta understand that I'm in, I will always probably be in trouble because it's always about the money. If you empower the people, where do corporations stand? I'll leave it at that. So now, <clears throat> so let's say that I've got a problem. Now, here's the deal. We're so programmed that if we have a sinus problem, we'll take an antibiotic. I mean, really? Are you like out of your skull? If you have an ear problem, an earache, you'll take an antibiotic. So you're gonna tell me that you're gonna take this pill. It's gonna go 30 feet down to your large intestine, blow up your bacteria, and it's gonna heal your ear. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, stick it in your rear. Okay, now, that would be a better place. <laughs> I just don't understand the logic here. And I already told you that 80% of the population is incapable of actually critical thinking. Okay? All right. So now, we take the antibiotic. The antibiotic goes in. The antibiotic will bring down bad bacteria, and it will cause mutation to the good bacteria. But that's not the problem. The yeast that naturally lives in your large intestine is now going to turn into fungus. Yeast goes to fungus. The yeast we need, the fungus, is a troublemaker. Now, everybody knows about fungus. And fungus is a type of mold. And the reality is, is that guess what? Fungus has a very important job. If you were a tree, and the tree died, then the fungus would come like drill bit predators and start eating holes in the tree to return the tree back to the soil to feed its brothers and sisters. The circle of life. Now, do you know that C60, MCT oil C60, which is known to eliminate symptoms of this completely, is the highest vibrational molecule on the planet. It is 250 to 300 times stronger than vitamin C. It is the strongest antioxidant on the planet. Now, ready for this? That, everything is frequency and vibration. Have I taught you that? Yeah. So who you hang around with, what you drink, what you eat, the way you treat yourself, what you watch, what you say, okay. Antibiotics vibrate below zero. They're not zero like a donut. See, a donut has a hole in it. You had a clue. Okay? That is zero. Now, 
Oh, and you do know that you are able to eat eight donuts, okay? If you're going to have a, uh, a Coke, you can have eight donuts. So what do you want? Eight, eight donuts equal a Coke. Okay, just saying, just trivial. But, uh, uh, okay. So antibiotics vibrate below zero, and that's the God's truth. So if they vibrate below zero, then they would turn off things that mean that you were zero. So if you had zero vibration, which means that you are on your way out or you're out and, and you've left your body, yeast turns into fungus right away. And the fungus multiplies like crazy when the vibration is below zero. And it says that you're dead and the body is dead. The body is dead. And that it's time to return it back to the soil. So, oh yeah, anybody want to challenge me? My number is uh, 469-861-9454. Would love to have you on a show. Uh, okay, let's show up. Let's grow up. Okay, now, here's the problem. One second. When yeast turns into fungus, it turns into what we call a drill bit predator. I just told you that's what fungus is meant to do is to put holes in things to re return it. So the reality is, is that will, unless you bring your vibration up right away, when, after you've done those antibiotics that saved your butt or you felt they were going to, you, if you don't bring and turn that fungus back into yeast and bring that fungus down, Well, so now what happens is the yeast turns into fungus and now it becomes a drill bit predator. Guys, you don't have leaky gut. You've got leaky large intestine. Even natural health practitioners go, well, I think you've got leaky gut. Well, guys, I just want to say this to every practitioner out there. Why don't you just say Because the reality is, is that everybody has done antibiotics, everyone, okay, and restore People do not know how to restore their gut flora. So that's never been restored. And you're never going to restore it. You know, if I was weak, okay, and I kept on having a weak diet mentally and physically, am I going to restore it? No, they're going to limp along. Your bacteria are going to limp along for the rest of their life. And the, the, uh, the yeast won't be there. It will be fungus for the rest of your life. And I'll prove it to you. So the reality is, is now we've got holes being drilled through the large intestine and now you've got what? You've got a screen door in a submarine. Now understand something. There are diverticulitis, fistula, um, hemorrhoids, polyps. It's all because of this. Okay, so now from the stagnation, remember something. Okay, the, it, it, you, it's a, okay, your digestive tract's an assembly line. And understand, unless you are drinking today structured hot water and you're drinking at least three quarts liters of that a day being a woman and four being a man. And if you're as big as a man, you need to drink four. So everybody knows that hot water cleans better than cold. And everybody knows, and even like when I was living in Mexico, if I drank hot water all day, I kept cool. And if you drink... Uh, uh, warm to hot water when it's cold you stay warm cold water constricts it shuts things down not a good thing everybody is taught the opposite to just mess you up okay so now guess what Did anybody ever hear of systemic candidiasis well do you know why you have systemic candidiasis which is fungal infection in your bloodstream and throughout your body because you have a screen door uh, in a submarine, which is your large intestine. So your large intestine only has one layer thick of cells and they get burnt off. The more infection you have, the more inflammation. And that's why you've got mucus in your stool. That's why you've got mucoidal colitis. you got bleeding colitis because now you've got ulcers because the bacteria have gone bad and they're eating holes through you. And that's the endobacterium. 
Now, what about diverticulitis? That just means inflammation of the diverticulum, which is an outpocket of poop stuck because the poop got stuck on the side of your bowel and then it, it, it was started to eat away the lining and now you've got an outpocket of poop. So like when you go and do the daily cleansing tea and black gold, most, all of this can be pretty well turned around just with those two things and hot water, enough hot water. That's it, oh my God, what a breakthrough. Oh, another scientific breakthrough. Okay, now, so what happens when you start cleansing is you'll see these brown black capsules Okay, they're small and to as big as a cigarette butt. And that's the diverticuli popping out. Because as soon as you get in alignment and harmony with your life, with your body, everything comes back. And it's no longer a fart attack, right? So now, guess what, here we go. So now you've got a screen door in a submarine. Sinus problems. Thrush. Earaches. Well, ears are a cave, the nose is a cave, and caves love mold unless they have proper light and circulation. Okay, all right. So what about eczema? Well, guess what? Eczema is where you have so much fungus going through your body and in your bloodstream, it's coming to the surface and coming out through your skin because your skin is the mirror of your large intestine. The skin is the mirror of the large intestine. So eczema, oh my God, you've got eczema. No, no, I was diagnosed with psoriasis. Well, that just means that you, that see, eczema is the baby brother of psoriasis. It just means that whoever you're going to, that practitioner sucks. He's sucking your money out of you because eczema becomes psoriasis when you don't get treated properly. So, you know, and if you had eczema and psoriasis, if you took a clapper, and you clap the eczema psoriasis until the pus was coming, a little bit of blood. And then guess what you do? You, you take the frankincense, you take the silver bullet gel and, uh, um, and a little bit of C60 and you mix them together and you put that on there and then you take a saran wrap and you put a coating on there and you leave it on there. It'll, it'll just dry off and fall off. But the reality is, is now you have a specific condition here which was only just a symptom of leaky gut which was a symptom of which was your large intestine you were constipated stagnated okay so understand something when your poo comes out and it's got cracks in it you're dehydrated when your poo sinks to the bottom of the toilet you're dehydrated when it comes out like little rabbit pellets you're dying that's how impacted you are does anybody know that you can take a seven inch a seven inch, okay, a seven inch stool, and in the average person, it will come out, and it can only be one inch by one inch, or even smaller, and that's a seven inch stool with all the water gone, because guess what, you didn't drink enough water, so your body had to suck the water from uh, your colon into your system. So what came first, the mosquito or the swamp? That swamp, you're all swamps. You're swamps. You, you know, you, you're not gonna have bad bugs and you're not gonna have worms unless you're a swamp. Now you could be a swamp here because you're so low vibrational. Gaston, I'll call you back, I'm on a live, okay? I'm on a live, goodbye. There, he'll just keep calling. Got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. <laughs> All right. Anyways. So he's, he's the gentleman who's building the BraveheartNation.com and building the uh, Power Pack website. He's doing a lot of stuff for us. Really nice, real nice fellow. Anyways, where was I? What was, what was my last? Swamp. Swamp. Yeah. So understand something, guys. And here, let me get back here to this. You have to understand that your large intestine is... Uh, your immune system, 85% of your immune system, but guess what it is? Your large intestine is, let's say it together, I'm gonna say it and then we're gonna say it together, is at compost. It is is at compost. compost. And guess what, most of you are throwing what? Chips, donuts, alcohol, okay, uh, bread, uh, uh, cereal, um, uh, lots of dead animal products, 
uh, lots of dairy that has antibiotics in it, that's pasteurized, that's not even good for you, down in the compost. So the more plastic food, the more toxic food. Okay, so if you had a garden and you grew your own food, would you put potato chips in it? No. French fries? No. Burgers? No. What are you doing? So understand, a whole plant-based diet. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm just going to say this. I could be wrong, but I think I'm probably 95% right. Avian's coming. I already did a thing on it the other day, right? Yeah. So the, uh, I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow, and I'm going to tell you what you need to do and how you can just say goodbye to that. Okay? Even if you think you catch it. And guess what, everybody? This is man-made. Okay? All right? Just like... Don't eat man-made foods and don't uh, and don't play with man-made viruses. Okay, they all, all right. Have patent numbers. Look it up. Yeah, they all have patent numbers. Yes, Why would they have patent numbers? Anything that was made by nature doesn't have a patent number because they can't patent it. Anyways, I don't want to get into that. That's political. <laughs> you had to do it, didn't you? Okay. Um, where was I? Okay. So, seeing that your large intestine is a compost, look what you've been throwing into it. Yeah. So that's why you feel shitty. That's why I feel crappy, okay? And then guess what we have people doing? And this is because the natural health industry has not been uh, uh, trained properly. So most practitioners, and don't tell me no, how many of you have went to a practitioner that says, you know what, you should detox like every three months to six months. Why would you do that? Why would you let it pile up and feel like crap and then go into a deep cleanse and feel crappier? Why wouldn't you go and get a perfect day consult, right? And learn how to have a perfect day and love yourself throughout the day just to feel better and never ever feel like crap again and have your immune system always just there. <laughs> no logic, no critical thinking, hardly from anybody. All right. So if that is actually your garden, so what you put in here matters and how you chew it matters. So here we go. Let's go into it. So here's what's going on, okay? 750 uh, sets of ovaries, 750, well, 1,000, 750,000 sets of ovaries and 750,000 uteruses were cut out of American women this year. Yes, okay, now, um, the, that is the uh, uh, second most surgery done. What is the first one? Caesarean. Understand something. If you want to have pelvic problems, if you want to have digestive problems, if you want to have emotional problems for the rest of your life, go get a caesarean and then don't get a non-surgical therapist to work on it. Because after a caesarean, every woman knows she's got a two to three inch, uh, they're called roots growing off and they're called adhesions. In the brain, they're called lesions. In the, in the abdomen, they're called adhesions. Those adhesions wrap themselves around your intestines, stick your intestines together, choke off your intestines, wrap themselves around your ovaries, your uterus, and even will create infertility later, okay? But painful lovemaking, bladder infections, endometriosis, fibroids, tumors, um, uh, ovarian cysts. Do you want me to keep going? Okay, so here's the deal. So that, and you don't have to have a cesarean to have everything I just said. All you got to do is poop in your pelvis. Oh, but wait a minute. I have a really good poop. Yeah, guess what? How, how many people do you poop with? Yourself. And you don't even talk about your poop. And guess what? How much do you know about your poop? You never even checked your children's poop. Yeah, you might have like one or two people. So relax. I get it. There's some people out there. I really know that there's people that are awake. Very few. But guess what? Being a parent, the first thing you know, you need to know is potty training 101. Every parent and everybody out there that cares about their body should go into my library and watch how to become number one at the art of number two and understand that, okay? All right, get your head out of your butt and go do that. Go watch this, okay? And also go check out uh, um, Holy Crap, the Holy Grail, and also check out the Digestive Track, the Highway of Life, and watch those videos. Watch those videos. So here it is. You ready? 
95% of all low back surgeries are caused because you pooped in your pelvis. Okay? Um, 95% of all sciatic problems are caused because you pooped in your pelvis. All, uh, ready for this? 95 to 98% of all hip surgeries are because you pooped in your pelvis. Are you ready for this? Uh, 90% of all knee problems are because you pooped in your pelvis, because it weakened your knee. Uh, do you actually think if you poop in your pelvis that, that and you and you have a and you have a uh, uh, you poop in your pelvis, which is called the pelvic bowl, because of gravity, does the poop go up? No, the gas does. We talked about that, but that's why you get heart pressure. You get heart pressure because you got gas acid. Right? Gas acid. Okay. So. <laughs> so, anyways, but when it comes to pooping in your pelvis, it all goes down and out. So if I had a bowl, which is the pelvic bowl, but if I had a bowl and I was dripping water in it, eventually would it pour over the sides of the pelvic bowl? Mm -hmm. Well, where's it going to go if it pours over the sides of the pelvic bowl? It's going to, okay, first of all, do you remember when you were younger, you never heard of anybody with hip surgery, did you? No, hip surgery is the epidemic. That's it. And the hip surgery is because you pooped in your pelvis. I don't care who you are. Even if you said, no, I had a car accident. Well, guess what? If you're pooping in your pelvis and you had a car accident, that's going to be tons more inflammation, which is going to cause scar tissue formation, calcification. And I'm going to explain that it's a hoax. Back surgeries are a hoax. Just so everybody knows this, and if you want, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can get testimonials from them. But the reality is there's tons of testimonials up there. So I've had three people in the last three weeks, last three weeks, that were booked for surgery, okay, either for their hip, okay, or for their low back, and I did one treatment, surgery was canceled. Take it or leave it, don't believe it, your body's amazing. Yeah, so you know, go ahead, be fearful, get things chopped out, and because you know what, we're so toxic, and we're so unworthy, and we're such sinners, we couldn't cut out enough parts. All right, so now, the infection goes into the pelvic bowl, and infection creates inflammation. You can't have inflammation without infection. And everything happens psychological before biological. The invisible creates the physical. And whatever the emotion is, negative emotion you can't process, it will create an offset into the, into the physical body. End of story. That's real science. Now, so now the pelvic bowl is filling up with infection. So understand, that person that actually has the hip that they're saying something, that hip is not bone on bone, okay? I live 10% of the cartilage left. I have no, no cartilage in your knee, no cartilage in your, uh, uh, in your hip, okay? Because it's calcified or it's bone on bone, okay? And we'll reverse it because you will grow back the cartilage and it doesn't take long, it's very quick. You can come to me and you can be like limping I mean, so bad that you're in pain. You gotta, uh, uh, I gotta, uh, and you're gonna, you may leave with the cane, but you will not leave with the pain. And if you leave with the pain, it will be 80% less. Is that enough to prove that we're right? I hope so. Now, the, as far as the, uh, uh, I'm gonna tell you a true story. So I was in uh, Calgary, Alberta, okay? I was in Calgary, Alberta two weeks ago. The gentleman came to me and he was booked, okay, to have surgery. All right, in two weeks, it's already booked. And I and uh, uh, anyways, I I did some mapping, and with my elbow, of his low back, and I went, it's going to take me two hours. And we'll take breaks because we need to. It'll take maybe two hours, but it actually didn't. It only took us uh, uh, took me fifty five minutes, and we took breaks. And I said I'm going to do four treatments, in one treatment. So it's going to be a little bit painful. So understand that. I said, so you're either gonna to go to surgery or I'm gonna do this. And so anyways, he, I said, what things can you not do? Well, I can't stand up and put my knees to my chest. I, I said, that's one thing I can tell. I haven't been able to do that forever. I can't even bend over, okay? So he can't even bend over. 55 minutes later, and I worked on him hard. I worked on him hard. So he went through, and you know, we're taking breaks. So he might have went through about 35, 40 minutes of me going deep and pulling the calcium apart, pulling the scar tissue apart. He put both knees up to his chest, 
and he bent over and he bent over, touched his toes and he bent and he did a full pelvic squat. Now, there's a lady uh, who was booked for surgery and she, she came to me, she's actually coming. She's actually gonna come here um, Saturday, I think. No, was it her? Was it? No, that's not her. Well, it was another lady. Okay, so I had a lady come to me, and uh, um, she is uh, um, a very famous designer, <laughs> clothes designer. Okay, and she's from Naples. Not gonna say any more. Anyway, she could not do a pelvic squat, and she's been doing yoga all her life, and she hasn't been able to do a pelvic squat for ten years. Okay. So I worked on her and all I did was, and she said, it's, it's, uh, uh, my hips are so frozen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get back surgery. I have to go for back surgery. And they also said, once the back surgery is done, they'll work on the hips. So I did her SI joints. I did her sacrum. I did from L, uh, I'm L1 to L5. And then I just went on top of her hips and on top of her hips, I found about a three inch calcium deposit with scar tissue. She did a full pelvic squat when she got up. She was in tears when she left. Oh yeah, she says, you have no idea. She goes, oh my God, you are gonna be so rich people that you are gonna be so swamped. I said, I don't live here. Oh, really? <laughs> anyway, so she's coming back next week. But um, the reality is, is guys, you can do what I can do and you can even do it better. So when you go to do the non-surgical, I want you to really just pay attention and do what we ask you to do and then do it for at least nine months to a year. And then when you start finding your own groove in your own way, because I don't want, we don't want followers. We want leaders. Do you understand? Okay. All right. So let's get back to it. So the pelvic, so understand the pelvic is creating 95% of all hip surgeries. So if you have to wait for a year or two years or six months for your pelvic surgery, or any type of pelvic surgery, or if you have to, let me tell you something. If you had a pelvic surgery of something in three days, we could prove to you your body is amazing. It was created by God Almighty. If you have to have uh, knee surgery, hip surgery, anywhere in the body, remember, I'm not trying to take over for the medical system. Go do whatever you want. But, oh my God, is there a law against telling people that the body has not forgotten how to heal? Once we get the calcium out of there and get it back in the bones and take the beef jerky, make it back into beautiful connective tissue. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. Any of you people that are booked for surgery or decide to go to surgery, you know what? That is a self-hate program. I'm just going to get it out there. It's a self-hate program because you don't love your body enough to give it a chance. So, but it's not you don't love your body enough. It's you're not patient with your body. So you're going to remain a patient forever. That's it. So, you know, go take your drugs, numb out um, your GPS, the most important GPS that is trying to talk to you and say, you're out of alignment, that's why you're swelling up, that's why you have pain, that's why you have inflammation, that's why you have stiffness. Go ahead, keep doing it until you numb yourself out and cut off the gut, which is the colon brain connection so you don't feel anymore because it's your bacteria that pick up the information about the body. And guess what? Your bacteria talk nine times to your brain and your brain only talks one time to your body. Do you know that? Do you know who, what's the most intelligent part of a body? Not the brain, the bacteria. And what are they trying to kill out there? The bacteria. The bacteria. Any questions? So understand this. Vaginitis means inflammation of the vagina. vagina. Colitis, that's right. Arthritis, inflammation of the joint. Fibromyalgia, pain in the fibers. Okay, chronic fatigue, low oxygen level. Okay, that means you're backing the poop up into the liver. Thank you very much. So every itis means inflammation and you can't have an itis without infection. And that's physical and emotional infection. So I hope we're taking you in the right direction. Check out my braveheartnation.com and uh, uh, see if you're worth it. See if you're worth it. Okay? 
And if you want to check out my library, go to DrDetox.com. And it is the most powerful library in the world. And then go in there. And then if you want to challenge me, let's get this party started. Okay. The address for the church. Uh, the address for the church. It's the First Presbyterian Church of Stewart. Come on in. It's the First Presbyterian Church of Stewart. Hey, listen, tell your friends, tell your family. You know, seriously. And just know this, that every time we do a lecture, we also are going to come up online. Okay? All right? So the address is 1715 Northwest Pine Lake Drive, Stewart, Florida, 34994. The lectures are the 12th of April from 6.30 to 9, which we'll have Dr. Wolf doing the perfect day. And the following week is on the 19th, April 19th, which will be Dr. Sage Wolf, and we'll be concentrating on non-surgical. Yeah, if you'd like to come and get what we call a spot check, we'll go into that area that nobody can fix or figure out, and we'll go in there for three to five minutes, and we'll prove that that's a hoax. And if you guys are up to the challenge, the class still has a few spots open. and uh... It starts next Friday, the non-surgical course. And if you want, just give me a call at... 469-861-8884 or 9454. It'll be the best best thing you ever did for your friend, your family, yourself. Or go to BraveheartNation.com. Yep, it's amazing. The work is amazing. Uh, you know, I've been a first responder for, I was 30 years. And uh, just when you do the work, you know, I had a, a woman, we Dina and I had two, two you know, people in their 60s hip surgery scheduled just like you said and uh canceled. canceled and that was with two treatments one on her low back one on her hip just you know she calls me back she's ready to continue the work and uh the work is amazing she was also dealing with a shoulder injury that happened five years ago that she fell and she'd been living in pain for five years and what did the medical system nothing nothing it's nothing's broken it's fine but yet five years she was in pain I did one treatment on her shoulder and she was pain-free amazing work it's it's just powerful. incredible powerful and uh, I love it I'm on my fourth class guys and I still love everything that comes out of this guy's mouth so do you want to take your world back well then you better respect and honor your body and nobody's gonna do it uh, more than you can you know we're all looking for love in the wrong places check that one out okay have a beautiful day and 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 people are asking questions here um, I'll tell you what tomorrow I'm gonna be coming on with uh, um, Terry who invented our infinite iodine and understand something there's the the bird bee coming and uh, or any other thing that you want to believe in and just understand something we're going to be talking about nebulizing infinite iodine the only iodine that actually is a pure iodine on the planet even people say oh we've we've invented this nation iodine or this lugo's iodine no they're toxic the only pure iodine it's non-toxic that has no symptoms to it and everybody needs iodine every day but if you learned how to nebulize our iodine it will neutralize a virus in 15 seconds we have people that have been nebula who will nebulize and uh, um, do cell sonic and they've got stage four inflammation in their lungs and other uh, we have a gentleman out of Montreal and guess what stage four he's 70 some 77 years old he just found out that he's cancer free and yeah, I had, and you did the interview with uh, my other one, Debbie, yeah. and she had. Been, oh yeah, she had cancer too. Yes, she had she, lung cancer. Yeah, and she uh, she had been nebulizing that. She also nebulized the. She silver. nebulizes also, guys. You have to understand. I have the only uh, fulvic that you can put in your eyes in the world called bright eyes, and if you nebulize that, it'll go into your sinuses, into your brain, into your blood, into your lungs. And uh, what it'll do is, is it will grab onto heavy metals. It'll grab onto acidity. It'll lock down any type of infection as well. So what we have people doing is, I'm gonna be doing a whole nebulizing uh, uh, talk and we'll be doing that on Saturday, okay? Because tomorrow's our day off, so I will be coming on. And if I get time tomorrow, what was I gonna do, somebody asked? Oh, if I get time uh, tomorrow, I'll come on and I'll, later in the night or in, later in the afternoon, I'll come on and do a live Q&A, okay? 
I'll do a live Q and A where I'll answer questions. But you don't get this, do you? I told you that if you call me and you don't get me, you leave a message, I will call you back and talk to you. You can't be scared of me. Uh, you know, I can't answer all the questions here, okay? So if you call me on any of my phone numbers, 469-861-8884, I am gonna call you because I'm not allowed to drive anymore because I hit shit. And uh, uh, not, I have a license, but it's just my partner. She chooses not to lose her life, okay? <laughs> so uh, this is what I do. And guess what? We love you. God bless. Hi, guys.